Uh, yeah, can you actually talk about COVID here? I mean, I think it's valid to talk about. I uh, Part of it is, uh, because this is a sponsored stream, I'm trying to uh, keep extra on topic. Obviously, we're ranging a little bit because there's a lot of just isolation with this game. Um, but I feel like this game evokes a lot of topics with the idea of Wanderlust, leaving home, uh, experiencing new things in the world, and, and things that you might not necessarily understand or be ready for. And so I'd rather kind of talk about it in more general terms, or just other things that are slightly less uh, inflammatory. <laughs> because talk, talking about Dunning-Kruger, people knowing, uh, thinking they know more than they, they actually do. My brother is a has a doctorate in physical chemistry, I believe it is. Uh, so pretty dang smart, went to MIT, did a lot of other uh, like cool science stuff and other things. Like even he's pretty humble about what he knows. But he had done like a project a while back on DDT and how um, many of the problems with DDT were more just because people were implementing it badly and that the, the chemical, ex chemical itself, the, the pesticide itself, was not actually that big of an I want to go see whatever the hell that is. Um, you know, wasn't necessarily as bad as everybody made it out to be. It's just, you know, poor handling and some other things. Um, but... This got brought up as a topic of conversation with my extended family, who are all farmers and hunters in Minnesota, and uh, they were much more like anti it and weren't at all interested in like reading his research or any anything like that, um, and were m way more interested in just yelling at him that he was wrong. And it's just like I don't know. They're usually pretty good. I think it was just that one hit struck a nerve. But that... I think... In so many things, the world and people would be so much better off if everybody could admit that they don't know Jack. And there's still so much to learn. The poor handling is kind of expected, though. People who use it do not care about the environmental impact. Oh, absolutely. There are, there are serious, uh, serious like problems with a lot of things. I mean, even so much as like farming, for example. Uh, that, you know, many farmers don't even know how to farm well and like avoid burning the soil out. And so usually they just use heavy fertilizers. But like crop rotation kind of a thing that humanity has known about for years but a lot of farmers just don't do crop rotation for whatever reason they just kind of make the one crop and then just do it forever that could also lead to situations where people go along with whoever sounds more confident i think that's part of it though the recognition that not everybody knows everything and there's so much to learn is that it is so easy currently to just go with who sounds the most confident and that if everybody recognized that, you know, they, these people have the possibility of being wrong, I think it would be better. Maybe. Easier to use chemical instead of crop rotation. Yeah, easier ain't great. Okay, where the heck am I? I have left the building. I'm here. Okay. We should probably actually find a city or a something. I want to find a balloon so I can buy some maps. Otherwise, this is kind of pointless. The environments are lovely. I'm curious how much stuff there actually is in each of these locations, like what to do in each of them. Okay, I'm seeing a mountaintop that has sparklies coming off of it. I guess let's head that direction. We'll just find something. And to go back to my, my point about how I'm so glad that they have this art style for this game. Nothing will ever... Well, okay. I'm not going to say nothing. There might be other games that end up looking like this one. But nothing up until now has ever really looked like this game. And it's going to be a long time before anything else will look like it again. And that alone gives it a huge amount of merit. Just from a... A novelty standpoint. That... You know, I here's an easy one. I've been doing 3D modeling lately. Uh, like, a lot of it, actually. I, 
I want a foray, foray into being a VTuber. I think it would be really interesting to just have a VTuber model just kind of going in the corner all the time. Uh, just because? Why not? Okay, this looks cool? Question mark? And so I've been doing a lot of 3D modeling as part of that to make make the dang thing. Um, and yeah, I could have just paid somebody that actually knows what they're doing, but to some degree, kind of like the whole crafting the bike in this, there's... There's worth in doing it yourself. Uh, and that's kind of where I'm at with with making my avatar. Perfectly illustrates why I'm so attached to No Man's Sky, but this has a better focus. Yeah. Wait, are the eggs transparent? I have no idea. Chum egg. So is this a drive around and look at the art kind of game like Journey? Yeah, though there's a little bit more focus. There's things to do, stuff to collect. Like there's aspects of collectathon. And otherwise, yeah, how many can you miss? Oh gosh. I don't even want to think about that. Okay, so I'm gonna have to climb it? There's no way. Oh! This is the chum layer. What? So who's the developer of this? This is nice. So it's developed by Shedworks and published by Raw Fury. Uh, so Raw Fury are the people, I mean, easiest example I can come up with would be Kingdom, Kingdom 2 Crowns, Kingdom 2 Lands. Uh, they did Northgard. They did... Oh, shoot. What was the one with the Raccoon Detective that came out earlier this year? They published that one. They're publishing the... Uh, that really slick mecha fighting game that Shell and I checked out a couple months ago. Um... Their, uh, their library has gotten pretty Im immense. I might actually want to just sit down and, and do, like, kind of little recommendation videos based on publishers. And, like, talk about who the publishers are. Wait, is that just Mega Chum up there? What? Alright. I'm just gonna... Okay, it looks like... Okay, here we go. I think I can make this. Please don't fall, please don't fall, please don't fall. Oh. Okay, there we go. Okay, got it. Hopefully there's a way to upgrade my stamina at some point. What is going on with this? What is going here? I, I'm 99% certain this is like ultra chum here. Yes? Oh, I think I was supposed to be on the inside of this thing. Oh, well. 100 cuts. I'll take it. I was. Oh, man, it's a chumhemoth. Behold its magnificence. Upon seeing the frankly humongous chum holding up the remains of an ancient stone tower. I nearly jump out of my skin. Before I collect myself, I hear a voice cooing in my head. Ah, hello, wanderer. Please do not be frightened. The giant chum cocks its head at me and chirps. This thing is going to output the biggest egg. I cannot carry it. Are you talking to me? I realize as I ask that this question is for my own benefit. I am talking to you as much as I'm able to talk. And you're able to perceive my thoughts. But I assure you, I'm as real as you are. I hear you're carrying some of my children. Wait, your children? But what were the other ones that gave me the eggs? I'm worried. Uh, 
I can feel the eggs squirming in my satchel at their mention. I relax suddenly, comforted, comforted by the absurdity of the situation. Your name is old and vast, like the desert. I mouth the syllables as it chirps silently. Sable! How beautiful! I don't have a name as such, but I am the queen of the chums. You may call me Queen Chum or Chum Queen, as you prefer. I bow my head politely. It's an honor to meet you, queen. The queen seems surprised by my formality. Oh my, you're such a proper little human. Well, you... Being here feels very lucky indeed. Perhaps you could help us. Our eggs are scattered throughout the deserts, but they need to be planted somewhere safe. Bring them here, little one. I'll be able to give you something for your favor. My answer comes without hesitation. A big yes. You're a kind little slug, aren't you? I think I'm going to like you, Sable. To start things off, bring me five eggs. I have them with me already. Oh, you've been busy. So many of us together already. Excellent work, young Sable. The queen coos at me. While well, her gentle voice resonates in my head. Oh, how fortunate for you have taken an interest in us. I find myself smiling at the magnanimous compliment. You're a real specimen in this age. Just eats the eggs. Yum! Ah, oh, water. I haven't seen water in... Oh my god, that's confusing. We have gained a Chum Queen tier. Stamina increased. Well, now you've got me all emotional. Lucky for you, the tears of a Chum carry great power. I suggest you keep that information to yourself. I nod solemnly, sparing her any elaboration on her suggestion. The tear feels like a gift. I feel stronger, more resilient. Bring me 15 eggs next. Okay, so that's a good motivating factor. What are these? I don't know. Can't do anything with them yet. Maybe they open up as I clear things out. At least I hope that's the case. Well, I'm glad I found this thing relatively early, just because why not? I made a giant salamander cry and absorbed her tears through my chest. Yup. Gosh, what was I talking about? Before I get distracted by the giant, truly, tr truly giant chum. Uh, let's see. Oh, my bike's over here. Oh, right. I parked it up above. Of course. Oh, I parked it right here. Hey, sweet bike. We... Yeah, I don't remember what I was talking about. Oh, well. Things. How many of you guys have flown the nest? I might as well ask, because I feel like that's that's super relevant to this game and kind of a conversation to have. And that could really mean, like, a whole bunch of different things. Okay, I see a balloon there, which means we want it. Because I know for me, I've always been... I'm going to say a bit wanderlusty when it comes to, like... Where I live. I don't live with my parents anymore, but I don't live on my own. Seems like you're flying a junker. Eh, it's not really a junker. I gotta paint it though. Hey, and thank you, Deadly Dork Fifty Four, for the five month resub. Oh, reviewing publishers and providing insights on who they are. Yeah, I just think it would be kind of interesting to talk more about that. Kind of along the lines of the um. Well, I mean the interviews that I've been doing recently, which hopefully I get to do another one sooner than later. Huh. Thought Chums reminded me of the lizards from Shadow of the Colossus. It's pretty much the same, but with extra steps. That is actually a really good point. Okay, this looks like, uh, this might be a town. It's kind of freaky, but still. Yeah, live over a time zone away from my family. How do you guys find it? You know, being on your own to that extent. I know for me, it's kind of freeing. I love my family. They're nice to be around, but I'm kind of okay with having some distance between me and them. I don't... I'm not gonna say that, like... Well, I don't I don't dislike them. I like my family a fair bit. It's just nice to have that freedom that they were here for almost two weeks. And... By the end of it, I was just ready... I was ready to... Uh, be alone again for a while. For you, it's great, but your parents are bad. Yeah, that's also true. I 
I think I'd like to be within uncomfortable driving distance is my inevitable goal. Wow, you really do laterally float. That's actually kind of huge. Normally when, when I play games with a slow fall, you don't really slow fall to this extent. As a big snake. This was Chum Daddy. Like this is this is what happens when you kill the the king of chums. The chum queen is quite small and you know compact and a reasonable size. The the chum king, on the other hand, the chumperer. <laughs> Emperor Chump himself. You know, now that's a thing to be terrified by. They cried him dry to feed a spaceship. There's got to be a more efficient way to get up to this village, but heck if I know. Oh. Okay. Well. I was going to say this better be worth it, but honestly, I think th I think that's one thing I I need to accept more in in games. Huh. It's got kind of a hippo face going on. That in a lot of games sometimes the journey is actually more important than the destination. And I think this is something that I I specifically have been wanting to um kind of adjust mentally and personally for a while. I Oftentimes when I play games, I'm always kind of rushing. Um, I'm always rushing to get to the end, to see the credits, so I can kind of finish the series and not feel like I have to keep recording more. Uh, and I think that's actually... I mean, it's been good because it means I finished more series, but I think it's been bad. Because I started seeing games as more of like a series of checklists than anything else. And it got kind of frustrating. And so now I've been trying to force myself away from that specific mentality. I think that's been healthy for me. But, you know, as part of that recognizing, you know, for a game like this, who cares about, like, where I'm going? It's more just kind of the act of going is kind of fun. Let's see, is this PC? Yes, I'm playing it on PC, but it's available on, like, everything. There's min-max the fun out of games by constantly reloading saves to get the pos best possible outcome. I try to always use Iron Man mode or something to combat that. Oh, see, I just... Yup, no, 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 don't... Oh, gosh. I was going to be beyond peeved if I fell. Okay, so now that I've taken that path, was there a better path? No. <laughs> Getting up to this guy is just... Effort, no matter what. The cartographer greets me slowly, like they're not sure if I'm really there or not. Huh? What? what? Oh. Oh, right. Hello. Huh. Wait, it's still Queen Chum. Oh, no! Queen Chum has infected this poor person. You've come a long way, haven't you, Glider? The voice wavers a bit. Welcome to the Black Sea, uh, Koa. Ask if they're all right. Better than all right. I'm brilliant. Can I buy a map? Brilliant, have a look at my wares. Uh, cartographer's badge. It's often quite a journey to get to them, but the views are incredible. And they're always worth speaking to about the local area. And cartographer's badge. Badge traded by cartographers. It's often quite a journey to get to them. Okay, so it's the same deal. Wait, no, no, no. It's just not showing me the map info. Oops. Hello, yes. Hello, Queen Shum. Badlands map. Impossible to navigate through the towering and maze-like cliffs without a map of the Badlands. Oh, without. A map of the Badlands made, by, made and sold by members of the Cartography Guild. Cool. Okay. What should I see nearby? They respond like I should already know what they're about to say. Of course, you'll find shelter at the Seven Sisters Station. Not sure if you'll find any sisters, though, let alone seven of them. They look up thoughtfully. Oh, Glowworm Cave is a magical place. You must make some time for it now that you're here. Weird as anything, you'll love it. And there's something really special about the Crystal Plateau. Though I wasn't able to get my balloon out there, it doesn't mix well with the lightning you see. 
Oh, I see. We're supposed to be there. Okay. What other regions are we near? Always a good plan to orient yourself. Love it. To the north lies, lies Red Sea, and across the Badlands to the east, you'll find the wash. Okay, anything else? Nope, thanks. I thank the cartographer for their valuable time and head off. I love their ridiculous hats. Okay. Wait, I'm here? No, that's the chum layer. Okay. And that's the balloon. Looks like there might be some interesting things over there, but boy howdy. I think I'm just gonna pop down and maybe just do whatever. Oh, shoot. Um... How do I use the compass? Whoa. Okay. Funky. Okay, I gotta figure out how to get up that. I also gotta find my bike. What else have we got around here? Oh. We've got a... How do I... How do I do this again? Now that summons my bike. Okay. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Moving further out there? No. Okay. Well, I've placed a marker. And then I guess I'm just going to ignore my bike and keep trying to climb if I can. I'm back. Did anything cool happen in the last 20 minutes or so? I think you missed the best part of this game. You missed the chum queen. And her royal magnificence. She's actually very cute. All things considered. It's okay. She was just very big. And then... Cried us some things. Oh yeah, and then... Then she took the form of her cartographer and sold us a map. The designer of RimWorld had a D GDC talk where he wanted players to think of the game as a story generator and not a system to optimize. So suboptimal equals interesting story. I know, but I don't play it, for, play it to be hard. Yeah, that is a thing for me. I often find games that are challenging tend to have the best stories that come out of them. But I'm always like, it's always such a gamble of like, it's hard. And so I guess you get a good story out of it. But did you have fun? I think for some people, yes. I think a lot of people do it, have a tremendous amount of fun out of, you know, really difficult games. RimWorld especially. I think for me, it's always kind of a hit and miss situation. I think I want to head over to that ship-looking thing and see what's in there. Hey, and thank you, Criers, for the raid as well. Well, come on in. We are... I don't want to say I'm finishing up here. I'm um, getting, getting close. But we are playing Sable, the... Uh, I don't know, Journey-esque... I don't even know how to describe this game. Because it's not Journey-esque. It's its own thing. They're both their own thing. Yep. Snap it. Alright, there we go. Now let's wait for my stamina to come back. There we go. We need to find more chums. Okay. Please take me to the top here. Bap. Yeah, we're good. I'm always worried that I'm going to run out of stamina before I can make it. Especially because I very much feel like this is not a zone that I'm prepped for. Not that that's that big of a deal, but still. I 
Makes me think of the Miyazaki movies. This game? I can see that. I, uh, her outfit 100% reminds me of Nausicaa's. I almost want to say some or all of that is intentional. It's gotta be, right? Maybe it's not. I don't know. I have I have not actually seen a whole lot of Nausicaa in the Valley of the Wind. I think I'd like to. Low frame animations are neat, though. Yeah! Oh, right! That's what I was talking about. Art style. That was, that was the topic I wanted to get back to. Art style is really important in a video game. Go figure. But one thing that was kind of... That I, I've run into in a lot of cases is that, like... I desperately am always looking for games that have an art style that stands out more, like this. Um, the, in the beginning days of, of 3D indie games, I was really down with low-poly games. Uh, Astroneer is probably one of the better examples I can immediately think of. I don't think there's anything to do in here yet. Maybe we get a, a quest or something to come back. I don't know. Um, doo -doo -doo. you good? Yeah. Let's just go over here and see what's up. But, uh, you know, I was originally super keen on low poly animation and art and whatnot, just because, like, it was such a unique style and you hadn't really seen a whole lot. Like, a whole lot of low poly 3D since, like, the PlayStation era. And even then, I feel like a lot of the design conventions from PS1 and N64, like a lot of those design conventions have still kind of been forgotten and left by the wayside in favor of higher def environments. And so, I, I guess it's so exciting to see a game that really does embrace some of those techniques, but also mix it with some new ones. So yeah, lower frame rates. Uh, you know, not really high def modeling. I'm actually really cute. Curious what the poly count is on these characters. Can I can I get in box? Yes. I am in box now. Oh boy. Well that It's a thing. Hello. There's nobody here, is there? There's birds. There's a ridiculous quantity of birds. But not a soul in sight. Wanderer's cat. I think I do have a cat personality. Maybe? I don't know. Whoa. Hello, yes. I have become one with the environment. Whoops. That doesn't have collision. Oh, hey, treasure. Sweet. Oh. Eerie's trousers. Split toe shoes make missteps at great heights less likely. And grips on the soles make exploration easier on foot. Does that actually have a tangible benefit or is it mostly just saying that it's a thing? I'll take it. It'd be really cool if it actually did have a tangible benefit. But, so for a while I was really excited with, uh... With low-poly games, just because it was such a left turn stylistically. Um... And nowadays I kind of hate low-poly again. Obviously, like, if there's a really good low-poly game... And I don't really think I would actually consider this low-poly. It is definitely lower poly count than, like, most games are. But... It's still kind of its own cell shaded thing. But you know, nowadays it's not infrequent that I'll come across a game that has uh low poly artwork and it's like it's like check out this sweet low poly art. I'm like, okay, cool. And then I realize that it's using the exact same art assets as like seven other games. Like I'm sure you guys have seen the same exact same like low poly orc and adventure models. Than I have over and over and over again. And so. I'm always really excited to see new styles pioneered. Always a little concerned that they're going to be like overused. In a negative way. Like Borderlands for a little bit. There, there's that period of time where it's just like. Oh no. You know. Is everybody going to be making these games now? And then it turned out that almost nobody did. Hello. You actually are a person here. You've traveled a long way. Not often we get travelers. Why are you out here? I'm just harvesting some of the bird excrement with uh with get from the sorry, we get from these towers. 
I've traveled a long way. Okay, same thing. Do you live up here? Only for parts of the earth. The winds get rough and it becomes hard to stay. But to get the get on the sands and sell up what we can in the hard months. I do love it up here when the winds are steady. Nothing's quite like riding a boat through the towers of rock. The bird crap is the only downside, and a profitable one at least. If, okay, same deal. Bye. And Oh. Ah. It didn't have an interaction, but it was interactable. Oh. Is that her hair? Oh yeah, you can see her hair and ears. Cool. Oops. Platforming this tower is not easy. Okay, there we go. Big risk, go across the way? Yeah. If it looks like I'm not going to be able to climb it, I'm heading for the bones. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to climb that. This is so cool. Cool? I don't know. I just... I'm jealous. Not a lot of games really base their mechanics purely around the idea of like slow falling but at the same time it works really well seeing this art style makes me wonder what a single player no man's sky would have been like imagine exploring sci-fi worlds with this design yeah i gosh i don't want to get into that one too much but i love this this rise of exploration sim games especially because a lot of them are wholly unique worlds with really interesting things to see it's Nice. And it's nice that there's kind of no pressure in a lot of them, too. That it's just kind of like, yep, go for it. Have fun. It was single player at first, though. Yeah, it is true. Hey there, how can I help you today? What is this place? It's an ancient Hikar uh, Hikaric rune. We found it a few years ago and have been trying to get it back to life since. Cool, right? After we get the bird towers up and running, I spent a long time figuring out how to farm and engineer those big bones you see across the shales. It's like how we navigate the rocks, ferry ourselves around. If you have a bike, I got some interesting parts to sell. If you see Umi around, say hello. It's nice to see someone else up here. Okay, I'd like to trade. Okay, what? Okay. Bike booster. Sure. I'm gonna have a boat. Thanks for stopping by. If you see Umi around, say hello. Yeah, I already saw that. But the real question is, can I like... Take one of these out and about? Okay, see, I, I see a giant aqueduct out there. Well, who cares about this whole bike riding thing? We're just flying it from pillar to pillar. That's just going to be how I move today. I mean, it actually works quite well. Makes it a lot easier to get back up to some of these things. You love the idea of exploration. The feeling of being a pioneer in a place no one has seen before is great. I think about that sometimes. Um, I, was, I was watching a documentary from... Uh, Sir David Attenborough talking about how, you know, for him growing up exploring and all of these opportunities he had were so cool because many of these were like unsettled places. And that he really did get the feeling uh, of being one of those explorers that, you know, it was really cool to have this this untouched and undefiled world to explore and that you know that feeling has kind of disappeared obviously has gotten older but also just kind of as the world has become more crowded and i think there's kind of a beauty and a tragedy in that okay let's just destroy ourselves not that kind of gliding Oh, and the bike even is kind. It's just like, you sure you're 
Sure you wanted to do that? <laughs>